Eson, Kiria Layson, Kiria Layson. Kiria Layson, Kiria Layson, Kiria Layson. Kiria Layson, Kiria Layson, Kiria Layson. As I rise from sleep, I thank thee, O Holy Trinity, for because of thy great goodness and long suffering, thou wast not wroth with me, the slothful and sinner, nor didst thou destroy me in mine iniquities, but didst show thy wanted love for man. And when I was prostrate in despair, thou didst raise me to keep the morning watch and glorify thy dominion. And now enlighten thou the eyes of my mind, open my mouth to meditate on thy words and to understand thy commandments, and to do thy will, and to chant unto thee in heartfelt confession, and praise thine all-holy name, of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. O come, let us worship and fall down before our King and God. O come, let us worship and fall down before Christ, our King and God. O come, let us worship and fall down before Him, Christ the King and our God. Have mercy on me, O God, according to Thy great mercy, and according to the multitude of Thy compassions blot out my transgression. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know mine iniquity, and my sin is ever before me. Against thee only have I sinned, and done this evil before thee, that thou mightest be justified in thy words, and prevail when thou art judged. For behold, I was conceived in iniquities, and in sins did my mother bear me. For behold, thou hast loved truth, the hidden and secret things of thy wisdom hast thou made manifest unto me. Thou shalt sprinkle me with hyssop, and I shall be made clean. Thou shalt wash me, and I shall be made whiter than snow. Thou shalt make me to hear joy and gladness. The bones that be humbled, they shall rejoice. Turn thy face away from my sins, and blot out all mine iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and with thy governing spirit establish me. I shall teach transgressors thy ways, and the ungodly shall turn back unto thee. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God, thou God of my salvation. My tongue shall rejoice in thy righteousness. O Lord, thou shalt open my lips, and my mouth shall declare thy praise. For if thou hadst desired sacrifice, I had given it. With whole burnt offerings thou shalt not be pleased. A sacrifice unto God is a broken spirit. A heart that is broken and humbled God will not despise. Do good, O Lord, and thy good pleasure unto Zion, and that the walls of Jerusalem be builded. Then shalt thou be pleased with the sacrifice of righteousness, with oblation and whole burnt offerings. Then shall they offer bullocks upon thine altar. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. And in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all ages. Light of light, true God of true God, begotten, not created, of one essence with the Father through whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and became man. He was crucified for us under Pontius Pilate and suffered and was buried, and he rose on the third day according to the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge the living and dead. His kingdom shall have no end. And in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the Creator of life, who proceeds from the Father, who together with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who spoke through the prophets, in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the age to come. Amen. Thee do we bless, Thou most high God and Lord of mercy, whoever worketh with us deeds great and unfathomable glorious and extraordinary, whereof there is no number, who has given unto us sleep for rest from our infirmity and for repose of our much toiling flesh. We thank thee that thou hast not destroyed us in our iniquities, but hast shown thy wanted love for man, and though we were prostrate in despair, thou hast raised us up to glorify thy dominion. Wherefore, we beseech thine incomparable goodness, enlighten the eyes of our understanding, and raise our mind from the heavy sleep of slothfulness, Open our mouth and fill it with thy praise, that we may be able undistracted to sing and chant and give thanks unto thee, who art God glorified in all and by all, the beginningless Father, with thine only begotten Son, and thine all holy and good and life-creating Spirit, now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Most glorious, ever-Virgin, blessed Theotokos, 
present our prayer to thy Son and our God, and pray that through thee he would save our souls. My hope is the Father, my refuge the Son, my shelter the Holy Spirit. O Holy Trinity, glory be to thee. Unto thee do I commit mine every hope, O Mother of God. Guard me under thy shelter. It is truly meet to call thee blessed, the Theotokos, the ever-blessed and all-immaculate, and Mother of our God, more honorable than the cherubim, and beyond compare more glorious than the seraphim, thee who without corruption gavest birth to God the Word, the very Theotokos, thee do we magnify. Forgive them that hate us and do us wrong, O Lord. Do good unto them that do good unto us. To our brethren and kinsmen, grant their requests that are unto salvation and life everlasting. Visit them that be in sickness, and grant them healing. Pilot them that be at sea. Accompany them that journey. Be thou the ally of Orthodox Christians. Unto them that minister and show mercy unto us, grant forgiveness of sins. Upon them that have enjoined us, the unworthy, to pray for them, have mercy according to thy great mercy. Remember, O Lord, all our fathers and brethren who have gone to their rest before us, and grant them rest where the light of thy countenance shineth. Remember, O Lord, our brethren, the captives, and deliver them from every misfortune. Remember, O Lord, them that bring oblations and do good works in thy holy churches, and grant them their requests that are unto salvation and life everlasting. Remember, O Lord, us also, thy humble and sinful and unworthy servants, and enlighten our mind with the light of thy knowledge, and lead us in the path of thy commandments, by the intercessions of thine all-immaculate Mother, Our Lady the Theotokos, and ever-Virgin Mary, and of all thy saints, for blessed art thou unto all ages of ages. Amen. Through the prayers of our Holy Fathers, Lord Jesus Christ our God, have mercy on us. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory to thee, our God. Glory to thee. Heavenly King, O Comforter, the Spirit of Truth, who art everywhere present and fillest all things, O Treasury of every good and bestower of life, come and dwell in us and cleanse us from every stain and save our souls, O Good One. Holy God, Holy Mighty, Holy Immortal, have mercy on us. Aios o Theos, Aios Isiros, Aios Athanatos, Eleis Onimas. Holy God, Holy Mighty, Holy Immortal, have mercy on us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. All Holy Trinity, have mercy on us. Lord, be gracious unto our sins. Master, pardon our iniquities. Holy One, visit and heal our infirmities for thy name's sake. Kyrieleison, Kyrieleison, Kyrieleison. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Through the prayers of our Holy Fathers, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy on us. Amen. As we rise from sleep, we fall down before thee, O good one, and we cry unto thee with the hymn of the angels, O mighty one. Holy, holy, holy art thou, O God. Through the Theotokos, have mercy on us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Having raised me from bed and from sleep, O Lord, enlighten my mind and my heart, and open thou my lips, that I may praise thee, O Holy Trinity. Holy, holy, holy art thou, O God. Through the Theotokos, have mercy on us. Both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Of a sudden the judge shall come, and the deeds of each shall be laid bare. But let us cry out with fear in the midst of the night. Holy, holy, holy art thou, O God. Through the Theotokos, have mercy on us. Kyrieleison, Kyrieleison, Kyrieleison. Kyrieleison, Kyrieleison, Kyrieleison. Kyrieleison, Kyrieleison, Kyrieleison. Kyrieleison, Kyrieleison, Kyrieleison. As I rise from sleep, I thank thee, O Holy Trinity, for because of thy great goodness and long suffering, thou wast not wroth with me, the slothful and sinner, nor didst thou destroy me in mine iniquities, but didst show thy wanted love for man. And when I was prostrate in despair, Thou didst raise me to keep the morning watch and glorify thy dominion. And now enlighten thou the eyes of my mind. Open my mouth to meditate on thy words and to understand thy commandments and to do thy will and to chant unto thee in heartfelt confession 
and praise thine all holy name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. O come, let us worship and fall down before our King and God. O come, let us worship and fall down before Christ, our King and God. O come, let us worship and fall down before him, Christ the King and our God. Have mercy on me, O God, according to thy great mercy, and according to the multitude of thy compassions blot out my transgression. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know mine iniquity, and my sin is ever before me. Against thee only have I sinned, and done this evil before thee, that thou mightest be justified in thy words, and prevail when thou art judged. For behold, I was conceived in iniquities, and in sins did my mother bear me. For behold, thou hast loved truth, the hidden and secret things of thy wisdom hast thou made manifest unto me. Thou shalt sprinkle me with hyssop, and I shall be made clean. Thou shalt wash me, and I shall be made whiter than snow. Thou shalt make me to hear joy and gladness. The bones that be humbled, they shall rejoice. Turn thy face away from my sins, and blot out all mine iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and with thy governing spirit establish me. I shall teach transgressors thy ways, and the ungodly shall turn back unto thee. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God, thou God of my salvation. My tongue shall rejoice in thy righteousness. O Lord, thou shalt open my lips, and my mouth shall declare thy praise. For if thou hadst desired sacrifice, I had given it. With whole burnt offerings thou shalt not be pleased. A sacrifice unto God is a broken spirit. A heart that is broken and humbled God will not despise. Do good, O Lord, and thy good pleasure unto Zion, and that the walls of Jerusalem be builded. Then shalt thou be pleased with a sacrifice of righteousness, with oblation and whole burnt offerings. Then shall they offer bullocks upon thine altar. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. And in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all ages. Light of light, true God of true God, begotten, not created, of one essence with the Father through whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and became man. He was crucified for us under Pontius Pilate and suffered and was buried, and he rose on the third day according to the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge the living and dead. His kingdom shall have no end. And in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the Creator of life, who proceeds from the Father, who together with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who spoke through the prophets, in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the age to come. Amen. Thee do we bless, Thou most high God and Lord of mercy, whoever worketh with us deeds great and unfathomable glorious and extraordinary, whereof there is no number, who has given unto us sleep for rest from our infirmity and for repose of our much toiling flesh. We thank thee that thou hast not destroyed us in our iniquities, but hast shown thy wanted love for man, and though we were prostrate in despair, thou hast raised us up to glorify thy dominion. Wherefore, we beseech thine incomparable goodness, enlighten the eyes of our understanding, and raise our mind from the heavy sleep of slothfulness, Open our mouth and fill it with thy praise, that we may be able undistracted to sing and chant and give thanks unto thee, who art God glorified in all and by all, the beginningless Father, with thine only begotten Son, and thine all holy and good and life-creating Spirit, now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Most glorious, ever-Virgin, blessed Theotokos, present our prayer to thy Son and our God, and pray that through thee he would save our souls. My hope is the Father, my refuge the Son, my shelter the Holy Spirit. O Holy Trinity, glory be to Thee. Unto Thee do I commit mine every hope, O Mother of God. Guard me under Thy shelter. It is truly meet to call Thee blessed, the Theotokos, the ever-blessed and all-immaculate, and Mother of our God, more honorable than the cherubim, and beyond compare more glorious than the seraphim, Thee who without corruption gavest birth to God the Word, the very Theotokos, Thee do we magnify. Forgive them that hate us and do us wrong, O Lord. Do good unto them that do good unto us. 
to our brethren and kinsmen, grant their requests that are unto salvation and life everlasting. Visit them that be in sickness, and grant them healing. Pilot them that be at sea. Accompany them that journey. Be thou the ally of Orthodox Christians. Unto them that minister and show mercy unto us, grant forgiveness of sins. Upon them that have enjoined us, the unworthy, to pray for them, have mercy according to thy great mercy. Remember, O Lord, all our fathers and brethren who have gone to their rest before us, and grant them rest where the light of thy countenance shineth. Remember, O Lord, our brethren, the captives, and deliver them from every misfortune. Remember, O Lord, them that bring oblations and do good works in thy holy churches, and grant them their requests that are unto salvation and life everlasting. Remember, O Lord, us also, thy humble and sinful and unworthy servants, and enlighten our mind with the light of thy knowledge, and lead us in the path of thy commandments, by the intercessions of thine all-immaculate Mother, Our Lady the Theotokos, and ever-Virgin Mary, and of all thy saints, for blessed art thou unto all ages of ages. Amen. Through the prayers of our Holy Fathers, Lord Jesus Christ our God, have mercy on us. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory to thee, our God, glory to thee, heavenly King, O Comforter, the Spirit of Truth, who art everywhere present and fillest all things. O treasury of every good and bestower of life, come and dwell in us and cleanse us from every stain and save our souls, O good one. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Aios o Theos, Aios Isgiros, Aios Athanatos, Eleisonimas. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. All Holy Trinity, have mercy on us. Lord, be gracious unto our sins. Master, pardon our iniquities. Holy One, visit and heal our infirmities for thy name's sake. Kyrieleison, Kyrieleison, Kyrieleison. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Through the prayers of our Holy Fathers, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy on us. Amen. As we rise from sleep, we fall down before thee, O good one, and we cry unto thee with the hymn of the angels, O mighty one. Holy, holy, holy art thou, O God. Through the Theotokos, have mercy on us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Having raised me from bed and from sleep, O Lord, enlighten my mind and my heart, and open thou my lips, that I may praise thee, O Holy Trinity. Holy, holy, holy art thou, O God. Through the Theotokos, have mercy on us both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Of a sudden the judge shall come, and the deeds of each shall be laid bare. But let us cry out with fear in the midst of the night. Holy, holy, holy art thou, O God, through the Theotokos have mercy on us. Kyrieleison, Kyrieleison, Kyrieleison. Kyrieleison, Kyrieleison, Kyrieleison. Kyrieleison, Kyrieleison, Kyrieleison. Kyrieleison, Kyrieleison, Kyrieleison. As I rise from sleep, I thank thee, O Holy Trinity, for because of thy great goodness and long suffering, thou wast not wroth with me, the slothful and sinner, nor didst thou destroy me in mine iniquities, but didst show thy wanted love for man. And when I was prostrate in despair, thou didst raise me to keep the morning watch and glorify thy dominion. And now enlighten thou the eyes of my mind, open my mouth to meditate on thy words and to understand thy commandments, and to do thy will and to chant unto thee in heartfelt confession, and praise thine all-holy name, of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. O come, let us worship and fall down before our King and God. O come, let us worship and fall down before Christ, our King and God. O come, let us worship and fall down before Him, Christ the King and our God. Have mercy on me, O God, according to thy great mercy and according to the multitude of thy compassions blot out my transgression. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin, for I know mine iniquity, and my sin is ever before me. Against thee only have I sinned, and done this evil before thee, 
that thou mightest be justified in thy words and prevail when thou art judged. For behold, I was conceived in iniquities, and in sins did my mother bear me. For behold, thou hast loved truth, the hidden and secret things of thy wisdom hast thou made manifest unto me. Thou shalt sprinkle me with hyssop, and I shall be made clean. Thou shalt wash me, and I shall be made whiter than snow. Thou shalt make me to hear joy and gladness. The bones that be humbled, they shall rejoice. Turn thy face away from my sins, and blot out all mine iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and with thy governing spirit establish me. I shall teach transgressors thy ways, and the ungodly shall turn back unto thee. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God, thou God of my salvation. My tongue shall rejoice in thy righteousness. O Lord, thou shalt open my lips, and my mouth shall declare thy praise. For if thou hadst desired sacrifice, I had given it. With whole burnt offerings thou shalt not be pleased. A sacrifice unto God is a broken spirit. A heart that is broken and humbled God will not despise. Do good, O Lord, and thy good pleasure unto Zion, and that the walls of Jerusalem be builded. Then shalt thou be pleased with a sacrifice of righteousness, with oblation and whole burnt offerings. Then shall they offer bullocks upon thine altar. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. And in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all ages. Light of light. Amen. <coughs> <coughs> O come, let us worship and bow down to our King and God. O come, let us worship and bow down to Christ our King and God. O come, let us worship and bow down to Christ himself, our King and God. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, you are very great. You are clothed with honor and majesty, who cover yourself with light as with a garment, who stretch out the heavens like a curtain. He lays the beams of his upper chambers in the waters, who makes the clouds his chariot, who walks on the wings of the wind, who makes his angels spirits, his ministers a flame of fire. You who laid the foundations of the earth so that it should not be moved forever. You covered it with the deep as with a garment. The waters stood above the mountains. At your rebuke they fled. At the voice of your thunder they hastened away. They went up over the mountains. They went down into the valleys to the place which you founded for them. You have set a boundary that they may not pass over, that they may not return to cover the earth. He sends the springs into the valleys. They flow among the hills. They give drink to every beast of the field. The wild donkeys quench their thirst. By them, the birds of the heavens have their home. They sing among the branches. He waters the hills from his upper chambers. The earth is satisfied with the fruits of your works. He causes the grass to grow for the cattle and vegetation for the service of man, that he may bring forth food from the earth and wine that makes glad the heart of man oil to make his face shine, and bread which strengthens man's heart. The trees of the Lord are full of sap, the cedars of Lebanon which he planted, where the birds make their nests, the stork has her home in the fir trees. The high hills are for the wild goats, the cliffs are a refuge for the rock badgers. He appointed the moon for seasons, the sun knows it's going down. You make darkness, and it is night, in which all the beasts of the forest creep about. The young lions roar after their prey, and seek their food from God. When the sun rises, they gather together and lie down in their dens. Man goes out to his work and to his labor until the evening. O Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your possessions. This great wide sea, in which are innumerable teeming things, living things, both small and great. There are, there the ships sail about. There is that Leviathan which you have made to play there. These all wait for you, that you may give them their food in due season. What you give them, they gather in. You open your hand, they are filled with good. You hide your face, they are troubled. You take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. 
You send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. He looks on the earth and it trembles. He touches the hills and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have my being. May my meditation be sweet to him. I will be glad in the Lord. May sinners be consumed from the earth and the wicked, wicked be no more. Bless the Lord, O my soul. The sun knows it's going down. You make darkness and it is night. O Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Glory to you, O God, our hope. O Lord, glory to you. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Glory to you, O God, our hope, O Lord, glory to you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Have mercy. For the peace from above, for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the stability of the holy churches of God, and for the oneness of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for those who enter with faith, reverence, and the fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For our Archbishop and Father Methodius, the Honorable Presbyterate, the Diaconate in Christ, for all the clergy and the people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the President of our country, for those in civil authority, for armed forces in defense of liberty and justice, and freedom everywhere. Let us pray to the Lord. For the city and for every city and land, for the faithful who dwell in them, let us pray to the Lord. For temperate weather, for the abundance of the good fruits of the earth, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. For those at sea, those who try by land or air, for the sick and the suffering, for captives and the salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For deliverance from all tribulation, wrath, danger, and necessity, let us pray to the Lord. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by your grace. Commemorate our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious most Lady, the Thel Pucks, and ever Virgin Mary, Mary, with all the saints. Let us commend ourselves to one another and our whole life to Christ our God. To you, O Lord. For to you, O glory, honor, and worship is befitting to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages.
If you know iniquity, so Lord, <coughs> Lord, who can stand but with you there is forgiveness. In circles I on all you people and in compass her. And in your gift, glory to him who rose from the dead. For he is our God who redeemed us from our iniquities. Oh, I since I have waited for you, O Lord, my soul has waited for your word. My soul has hoped in the Lord. Until night from the morning watch, let Israel hope in the Lord. By your passion, O Christ, we have been free from passion. And by your resurrection, we have been free from corruption. Lord, glory to you. <coughs> For with the Lord there is mercy, and with him is plenty is redemption. And he shall redeem from Israel from all his iniquities. Today Hades cried out, groaning, Would that I not receive the one born of Mary. For he came upon me and loosed my power. He shattered the gates of brass, the souls which I held captive of old, as God he raised up. Glory, O Lord, to your cross and your Praise the Lord, all you his nations. Praise him, all you people. Today, Hades cried out, groaning. My authority is dissolved. I received a mortal as one of the mortals. But this one I am powerless to contain. With him I lose all those over which I had ruled. For ages I held the dead, but behold, he raises us. Oh, glory, O oh Lord, to your cross and your resurrection. But his mercy is evermore upon us, and the truth of the Lord endures forever. Today, Hades crying out, groaning. My power has been trampled on, the shepherd has been crucified, and Adam has been raised up. I have been deprived of those over whom I ruled, and all those I had the power to swallow, I have discourse. He who was crucified has cleared the tombs. The dominion of death is no more. Glory, O oh Lord, to your cross and your resurrection. Oh, 
Señor nuestro Sente, por ti se está Porque siempre está el Padre Santísimo en ti, 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 Now and ever into the ages of ages, amen. Let us praise Mary the Virgin, for she is the glory of the whole world. She sprang forth from the human race and gave birth to the Master. She is the portal of heaven, the song of the bodiless powers and the adornment of the faithful. She has been shown forth as heaven and as a temple of enmity, bringing us peace and has opened the kingdom. Therefore, having her as our anchor of faith, we have an invincible champion of the Lord born of her. Take courage, then take courage, you people of God, for he as the Almighty will vanquish the enemy. Sophia. Be attentive. Please be seated. In the beginning, God created the heavens and earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was moving over the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God said that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God called the, the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning one day. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it separate the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and separated the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. 
And God called the firmament heaven, and there was evening, and there was morning, a second day. And God said, Let all waters under the heavens be gathered into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas, and God saw that it was good. And God said, Let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees bearing fruit, in which is their seed, each according to its kind, upon the earth. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed according to their own kinds, and trees bearing fruit in which is their seed, each according to its kind. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening, and there was morning, a third day. The reading is from the book of Jonah. Wisdom, let us be attentive. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise and go to Nineveh, the great city, and cry against it for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah rose up to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare and went on board to go with them to Tarshish away from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord whirled a great wind upon the sea, and there was a mighty tempest on the sea, so that the ship threatened to break up. Then the mariners were afraid, and each cried to his God, and they threw the wares that were in the ship into the sea to lighten it for them. But Jonah had gone down into the inner part of the ship, and had lain down and was fast asleep. So the captain came and said to him, What do you mean, you sleeper? Arise, call upon your God. Perhaps the God will give a thought to us that we do not perish. And they said to one another, Come. Let us cast lots, that we may know on whose account this evil has come upon us. So they cast lots, and the lot fell upon Jonah. Then they said to him, Tell us, on whose account this evil has come upon us? What is your occupation? And where do you come from? What is your country? And of what people are you? And he said to them, I am a Hebrew, and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. Then the men were exceedingly afraid and said to him, What is this you have done? For the men knew he was fleeing from the presence of the Lord because he had told them. Then they said to him, What shall we do to you that the sea may quiet down for us? For the sea grew more and more tempestuous. He said to them, Take me up and throw me into the sea. Then the sea will quiet down for you. For I know that because of me that this great tempest has come upon you. Nevertheless, the men rowed hard to bring the ship back to land, but they could not because the sea grew more and more tempestuous against them. Therefore they cried to the Lord, We beseech you, O Lord, let us not perish for this man's life, and lay not on us innocent blood. For you, O Lord, have done as it pleased you. So they took up Jonah and threw him into the sea, and the sea ceased from its raging. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly, and they sacrificed to the Lord and made vows. Now the Lord prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Then Jonah prayed to the Lord his God from the belly of the fish, saying, I called to the Lord out in my distress, and he answered me. Out of the belly of Sheol, Hades, I cried, and you heard my voice. For you did cast me into the, into the deep, into the heart of the seas, and the flood was round about me. All your waves and all your billows passed over me. Then I said, I am cast out from your presence. How shall I again look upon your holy temple? The waters closed in over me, the deep was round about me. Weeds were wrapped around my head at the roots of the mountains. I went down to the land whose bars closed upon me forever. Yet you did bring my life from the pit, O Lord my God. When my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord, and my prayer came to you into your holy temple. Those who pray regard to vain idols forsake their true loyalty. But I, with the voice of thanksgiving praise, will sacrifice to you. What I have vowed, I will pay. Deliverance belongs to the Lord. And the Lord spoke to the fish, and it vomited out Jonah upon the dry land. Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim, it, proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah arose and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly great city, three days' journey in breadth. Jonah began going into the city, going a day's journey. And he cried, Yet three days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast and put a sackcloth from the greatest of them to the least of them. Then tidings reached the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne, removed his robe, and covered himself with sackcloth and sat in ashes. And he made proclamation and published through Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles, let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. 
Let them not feed nor drink water, but let man and beast be covered with sackcloth, and let them mightily cry to God. Yea, let everyone turn from his evil way and from the violence which is in his hands. Who knows, God may not repent and turn from his fierce anger, so that we perish not. When God saw what they did, how they were turned from the evil way, God <coughs> repented of the evil which he had said he would do to them, and he did not do it. But it displeased Jonah exceedingly, and he was angry. And he prayed to the Lord and said, I beseech you, O Lord, is not this what I said when I was yet in my country? That is why I made haste to flee to Tarshish. For I know that you are a gracious and merciful God, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and easy to forgive evil. Therefore now, O Lord, take my life from me, I beseech you, for it is better for me to die than to live. And the Lord said, Do you do well to be angry? Then Jonah went out of the city and sat to the east of the city and made a booth for himself there. He sat under it in the shade till he should see what would become of the city. And the Lord appointed a plant and made it come up over Jonah, that it might be a shade over his head to save him from his discomfort. So Jonah was exceedingly glad because of the plant. But dawn came up the next day, God appointed a worm which attacked the plant so that it withered. When the sun rose, God appointed a sultry east wind and the sun beat upon the head of Jonah so that he was faint. And he asked that he might die and said, it is better for me to die than to live. But God said to Jonah, do you do well to be angry for the plant? And he said, I do well to be angry, angry enough to die. And the Lord said, you pity the plant for which you did not labor, nor did you make it grow, which came into being in a night and perished in a night. And should I not pity Nineveh, that great city in which there are more than 120,000 persons who do not know their right hand from their left and also much cattle? The reading is from the book of Daniel. Wisdom, let us be attentive. King Nebuchadnezzar made an image of gold whose height was 60 cubits and breadth 6 cubits. He set it up on the plain of Dur in the province of Babylon. Then King Nebuchadnezzar sent to the assemble of sad traps the prefects and the governors, the counselors, the treasurers, the justices, the magistrates, all the officials of the provinces were assembled for the dedication of the image which King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then the satraps, the prefects, the governors, the counselors and the treasurers, the justices, the magistrates, and all the officials of the provinces were assembled for the dedication of the image which King Neb Nebuchadnezzar set up. And they stood before the image which King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. And the herald proclaimed aloud, You are commanded, O people, nations, and languages, that when you hear the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, the tree horn, the harp, the bagpipe, and every kind of music, you are to fall down and worship the image which King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. And whoever does not fall down to worship shall immediately be cast into a burning, fiery furnace. Therefore, as soon as the peoples heard the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, the harp, the bagpipe, and every kind of music, all the peoples, nations, and languages fell down and worshipped the golden image which King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Therefore, at that time, certain Chaldeans came forward and maliciously accused the Jews. They said to King Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. You, O king, have made a decree that every man who hears the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, bagpipe, and every kind of music shall fall down and worship the golden image. And whoever does not fall down shall be cast into the fiery furnace. There are certain Jews who have been appointed over the province of Babylon, Shagbrak, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, pay no heed to you. They do not worship your gods or worship the golden image which you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in a fury rage, commanded that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be brought. Then they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the golden image which I have set up? Now if you are ready, when you hear the sound of the horn, the pipe, the lyre, the trigon, harp, bagpipe, and every kind of music, to fall down and worship the image which I have made, well and good. But if you do not worship, you shall immediately be cast into a fiery furnace. And who is the God that will deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If it be so, our God, whom we worship, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us of your hand, O king. But if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the golden image which you have set up. 
that Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury, and the expression on his face was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abernego. He ordered the furnace heated seven times more than it was, won't be to be heated, and he ordered certain mighty men of his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abernego, and to cast them into the burning, fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their mantles, their tunics, their hats, and their other garments, and they were cast into the burning, fiery furnace. Because the king's order was strict, and the furnace was very hot, the flame of the fire slew those men who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abernego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell bound into the burning, fiery furnace. And they walked in the midst of the flame, praising God and blessed the Lord. Then Azarias, standing up, prayed in this manner and opening his mouth in the midst of the fire, he said, Blessed are you, O Lord, the God of our fathers, and your name is praised and glorified forever. For you are just, and all that you have done for us and all your works are true. Your ways are right, and all your judgments true. You have executed true judgments in all things that we have brought upon us, and upon Jerusalem, the holy city of our fathers, for according to the truth and judgment, you have brought all things upon us for our sins. For we have sinned and committed inequity, <coughs> departing from you, and we have trespassed in all things, and have not obeyed your commandments, as you have commanded us, that it might go well with us. Wherefore, all that you have brought upon us and everything that you have done to us, you have done in true judgment. You have delivered us into the hands of our enemies, who are lawless, most wicked, and hated rebels, and to an unjust king, the most wicked beyond all that are upon the earth. And now we are, cannot open our mouths. We have become a shame and reproach to your servants, to them that worship you. Do not give us up for your name's sake, and do not withdraw your mercy from us for the sake of Abraham, your beloved, and Isaac, your servant, and Israel, your holy one, to whom you have spoken, promising that you would multiply their seed as the stars of the heaven and as the sand on the seashore. For we, O Lord, are diminished more than any nation and are bo and bowed low in all the earth this day for our sins. And this is neither at the time a prince, a leader, or a prophet, nor a holocaust, nor sacrifice, nor oblation, or incense, nor a place of first fruits before you, that we may find your mercy. But in contrite heart and humble spirit, let us be accepted, as in holocausts of rams and bullocks, and in thousands of fat lambs. So let our sacrifice be made in your sight this day, that we may follow after you, for there is no shame to those that trust in you. And now we follow you with all our heart, and we fear you and seek your face. Put us not to shame, but deal with us according to your forbearance, and according to the multitude of your mercy. Deliver us according to your marvelous works, and give glory to your name, O Lord. And let all them be confounded who shows evils to your servants. Let them be disgraced in all your might, and let their strength be broken. And let them know that you are the Lord and only God, and glorious over all the world. Now the king's servants that had cast them in ceased not to heat the furnace with naphtha, tow, pitch, and dry sticks. And the flame mounted up above the furnace nine and forty cubics. And it broke forth and burnt the Chaldeans who were near the furnace. But the angel of the Lord went down with Azarius and his companions into the furnace and drove the flame and the fire out of the furnace and made the midst of the furnace like the blowing of a wind, bringing dew. And the fire did not touch them at all, nor troubled them, nor did any of them get harm. Then these three, as with one mouth praised and glorified and blessed, blessed God in the furnace, saying, Blessed are you, O Lord, the God of our fathers, the most praised and exalted to all ages, is blessed to the name of your glory, the holy and most praised and exalted above all to all ages. Blessed are you in the holy temple of your glory, the most praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed are you who looks over the depths and are seated on the cherubim, the most praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed are you on the throne of your kingdom, Please rise. the most praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed are you in the firmament of heaven, and praised and glorified to all ages. Τον Κύριον ημίτε και υπερηψούτε εις πάντας τους αιώνας. Ευωγείτε πάντοτε έργα Κυρίου των Κύριων. Τον Κύριον ημίτε και υπερηψούτε αυτόν εις τους αιώνας. Bless the Lord, angels of the Lord, and the Lord. 
the heavens of the Lord, Ton Kirion in Mite, Keri Peripsute, is Pandas to Seona. Bless the Lord, ye waters that are above the heavens, and all the powers of the Lord. Praise you, the Lord, and exalt him to all the ages. Ogni evlogite ilios keselini astra turano ton kirion, ton kirion inite gei peripsute ispandas tu seonai. Praise the Lord, light in darkness, nights and days. Praise the Lord and exalt him unto all the ages. Bless the Lord, showers and dew, all winds. Praise you, the Lord, and exalt him to all ages. Bless the Lord, fire and warmth, cold and heat. Praise you, the Lord, and exalt him to all ages. Bless the Lord, dews and snows, frozen cold. Praise the Lord, and exalt him unto all the ages. Bless the Lord, fountains, seas, and rivers, whales, and all that moves in the waters. Praise you, the Lord, and exalt him to all, all ages. Bless the Lord, earth's mountains and hills, and all things growing in it. Praise you, the Lord, and exalt him to all ages. Bless the Lord, fowls of heaven, and all animals and beasts. Bless us, you the Lord, and exalt him to all ages. Bless the Lord, sons of men, bless him and bless Israel, bless. Praise you the Lord, and exalt him to all ages. Bless the Lord, priests of the Lord, servants of the Lord. Praise you the Lord, and exalt him to all ages. Bless the Lord, spirits and souls of the righteous, holy, humble men of heart. Praise you, the Lord, and exalt him to all ages. Bless the Lord, Aeneas, Azarius, and Misael. Praise you, the Lord, and exalt him to all the ages. <coughs> Bless the Lord, apostles, prophets, and witnesses of the Lord. Praise you, the Lord, and exalt him to all ages. We, we bless the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the Lord. Praise you, the Lord, and exalt him to all ages. We praise and exalt the Lord to all ages. We praise, we bless, and worship the Lord. We praise and glorify the word Lord to all ages. Ton kiri on imite ke hiperipsute ispandas tu seona. For you are God, are holy, and to you is great glory, to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever, to the ages of ages. Amen. As many of you as were baptized in Christ, have put on Christ forevermore. Alleluia. O sis Christone Distinte, Christone Nebisaste, Alleluia. Those who have been baptized in Christ have put on Christ forevermore, Alleluia. Christ forevermore.
Let all the earth worship you and sing of you. All the earth sing with joy unto the Lord. Wisdom. The reading is from, from St. Paul's epistle to the Romans. Wisdom, let us be attentive. Brethren, do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ were baptized into death? Therefore we were buried with him through baptism into death. That just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves in sin. For he who has died has been freed from sin. Now if we died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over him. For death that had died, he died to sin once and for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Anasta Theos Kyrion God stands in the assembly of gods, and in their midst he judges. Arise, O God, judge the earth, for you shall take all nations to your inheritance. How long will you judge unjustly and accept the sinners? Arise, O God, and judge the earth, for you shall take all nations to your inheritance. Judge the orphan and poor, justify the humble and needy. Arise, O God, judge the earth, for you shall take all nations to your inheritance. Rescue the needy, the poor, and deliver from the hands of the sinners. Arise, O God, and judge the earth, for you shall take to your inheritance. I said you are gods, and all of you are the sons of the Most High, but you shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. They have not nor understood, they walk in darkness. All the foundations of the earth shall be shaken. Arise, O God, and judge the earth for you. to your inheritance. Sophia, the accusement of the Evangelium, in the past, 
Κατά Μαθαίο να γίνει ο Ευαγγελίο το ανάγνωσμα Πρόσκομαι Δόξα Συ Κύριε, δόξα Συ Όψε Σαββάτον και επισκοπούς εις μίαν Σαββάτον Ήρθα Μαρία η Μαγδαλινή και η άλλη Μαρία θεωρήσε τον τάφον και ειδού σεισμός έγινε το μέγας, άγγελος καρκύριου και τα βάση εξ ουρανού, προσελθώ να κέλυσε τον ήρθον από τη στήρας και ακάδιντο το πάνω αυτού. Είναι η ιδέα αυτού ως αστραπή και το ένδυμα αυτού λευκών ως ηχειών. Από δε του φόβου αυτού συστήσαν, οι εντυρούντες σε γένετος οι νεκροί. Αποκριθείς δε ο άγγελος είπε της γυναίξη, μη φοβήστε ημείς, είδα γαρωστήσουν τον εστραμμένον ζητείτε, ου και στηρώδε. Η γέρθη για αργαθός είπε Δε το είδετε των τόπων όπου έχει το Κύριος και τα χει πορευτήσε είπατε τις μαθητές αυτού ότι η έρθει από τον νεκρόν και ειδού προάγει μας εις την Γαλιλαία Εκεί αυτόν όψεστε. Ιδού λοιπόν η μην ξεκρατούσε ταχύ από το μνημείο με το φόβο και χαράς μεγάλη σε δραμόν οι παγγείλοι της μαθητές αυτού. Ως δε πορεύσοντο απαγγείλε τις μαθητές αυτού και ειδού Ιησούς απήντησε να φταίς λέγον χαίρετε. Ε, δε προσελθούσε, εκράτησαν αυτού τους πόδας και προσκύνησαν αυτό, τότε λέγει αυτές ο Ιησούς μη φοβήστε η πάγετε από αγγείλατε της αδελφής μου ή να δοπώσιν εις την Γαλιλαίαν κακοί με όψονται. Πορευομένον δε αυτόν οι δουτίνες της κουστοδίας έρθοντας εις την πόλη να πηγελήν τους αχειρεύσιν από το γενόμενα και συναχθέντες μετά το πρεσβητήρον συμβουλίων δεν άβονται σε εργυρία ικανά έδωκαν τις αρτριώτες λέγοντας είπετε ότι μάθητε αυτού νυχτός έρθοντες έκλεψαν αυτόν ημών κοιμωμένον και αν ακουστεί τούτο επί εμόνους εμείς πείσουμεν Αυτόν και εμάς ερηρήνως πείσουμεν. Οι δε λαβώντες τα αργυρία επίσαν, ερηδάκτησαν και διασμίστη ο λόγος ούτως παρά οι ουδέους μέχρι τη σήμερον. Οι δε ένδεκα μαθητέ Απορέφτησαν εις την Καλιλαίαν, εις το όρος του επάξωτο αυτής ο Ιησούς. Και ειδώντας Αυτόν προσεκίνησαν αυτό, οι δε δίστασαν. Και προς Αυτόν ο Ιησούς ελάλησαν αυτής λέγον, «Εδώ τι μη πας εξουσίαν ορανού και πηγής, Πορτέντες μαντιτεύσατε πάντα τα έθνη 
βαπτίζουν τα αυτούς εις το όνομα του Πατρός και του Ιού και του Ιού Πνεύματος. Διδάσκοντος σ' αυτούς την ειν πάντα ως λέει την αμήν ημήν και δου εγώ με θυμόν ειν η πάσα στα σημέρα έως τρεις την ελία σ' αυτούς αιώνους Amen. The reading is from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Matthew. Glory to you, O Let Lord. Glory to you. After the Sabbath toward the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the sepulchre. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat upon it. His appearance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay, then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. And behold, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. Lo, I have told you. So they departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy, and ran to tell his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them and said, Hail! And they came up and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brethren to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. While they were going, behold, some of the guard went into the city and told the chief priests all that had taken place. And when they had assembled with the elders and taken counsel, they gave a sum of money to the soldiers and said, Tell people his disciples came by night and stole him away while we were asleep. And if this comes to the governor's ear, we will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. So they took the money and did as they were directed, and this story has been spread among the Jews to this day. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always. To the close of the age, Amen. Glory to you, O Lord. Glory to you. Όπως υπό του κράτους σου πάντα τε φιλοτόμενοι Συν δόξενο να πέμπομεν Το Πατρί και το Υιό και το Υιό Πνεύμα την Ιν και Αΐ Και εις τους αιώνας των αιώνων
No one bound by worldly desires and pleasures is worthy to approach, draw near, or to minister to you, the King of Glory, to serve you as great and awesome, even for the heavenly power. But because of your ineffable and immeasurable love for us, you became man without alteration or change. You have served as our High Priest, and as Lord of all, you have entrusted to us the celebration of this liturgical sacrifice without the shedding of blood. For you alone, Lord God, rule over all things in heaven and on earth. You are seated on the throne of the cherubim, Lord of the seraphim, and King of Israel. You alone are holy and dwell among your saints. You alone are good and ready to hear. Therefore, I implore you, look upon me, your simple and unworthy servant, and cleanse my soul and heart from the need of consciousness, and enable me by the power of your spirit, vested with the grace of the priesthood, that I may stand before your holy table and celebrate the mystery of your holy and pure body and your precious blood. To you I come with head bowed and pray, do not turn your face away from me or reject me from among your children, but make me your sinful and unworthy servant worthy to offer these gifts. For you, Christ, our God, are the offerer and the offered, the one who receives and is distributed, and to you we give glory, together with your eternal Father and your holy and life creating spirit, now and forever into the ages of ages. Amen. Christ, in the holy resurrection, we praise and glorify for you, O God, we know whether it is your name, we invoke. Call him all you faithful one, as first of Christ's holy resurrection, we behold through the cross, joy has come to all the world. Ever blessing the Lord, let us praise his resurrection for enduring the cross, he destroyed death by death. Have mercy on me, O God, in the greatness of your love, in the abundance of your tender mercies, wipe out my offense. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin, for I am well aware of my iniquity, and my sin is before me always. It is you alone I have offended. I have done what is evil in your sight, wherefore you are justified in your charges and triumphant in your judgment. Behold, I was born in iniquities, and in sins my mother conceived me. But you are the lover of truth. You have shown me the hidden depths of your wisdom. Sprinkle with hyssop, and I shall be pure. Cleanse me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear sounds of joy and feasting. The bones are afflicted shall rejoice. Turn your presence away from my offenses and wipe away all my sins. A spotless heart created me, O God, renew a steadfast spirit in my breast. Cast me not away from your presence, take not your blessed spirit out of me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and let your guiding spirit dwell in me. I will teach your ways to the sinner, and the wicked shall return to you. Delivered from blood, give God, my saving God, and my tongue will joyfully sing your justice. For, Lord, you will open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Had you desired sacrifice, I would have offered it, but you would not be satisfied with whole burnt offerings. Sacrifice to God is a contrite spirit, a cross and humble heart God will not spurn. In your kindness, O Lord, be bound over to Zion, may the walls of Jerusalem be restored. Then we delight in proper oblation and sacrifice and whole burnt offerings. Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy. Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy. I see your bridal chamber of dawn, O my Savior, and have you no any garment that I may do therein, or give her light, may bring the best of my soul, and save me. Yeah. 
Parang Dios po. Let us cast the Lord. Grant this, O Lord. For forgiveness and remission of our sins and transgressions, let us ask the Lord. Grant this, O Lord. For all that is good and beneficial to our souls and for peace in the world, let us cast the Lord. Grant this, O Lord. For the completion of our lives in peace and repentance, let us cast the Lord. This, o Lord. For a Christian and to our lives, peace and will light, shame and suffering, and for a good account before the awesome judgment seat of Christ. This, o Lord. Remembering our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, the self office and ever Virgin Mary, with all the saints, us. let us command ourselves and one another in a whole life to Christ our God. To you, O Lord. Lord, our God, you created us and brought us into this life. You have shown us the way to salvation and have bestowed upon us the revelation of heavenly mysteries. You have appointed us to this service by the power of your Holy Spirit. 
Grant therefore, O Lord, that we may be accepted as servants of your new covenant and ministers of your holy mysteries. Accept us as we draw near to your holy altar according to the multitude of your mercy, that we may be worthy to offer you the spiritual sacrifice without the shedding of blood, for our sins upon the transgressions of your people. Grant that having accepted the sacrifice upon your holy, heavenly, and spiritual altars and offering of spiritual fragrance, we may in return send down upon us the grace of your Holy Spirit. Look upon us, O God, and consider our worship, and accept it as you accepted the gifts of Abel, the sacrifices of Noah, the burnt offerings of Abraham, the priestly offices of Moses and Aaron, and the peace offerings of Samuel. As you accepted this true worship from your holy apostles, accept also in your goodness, O Lord, these gifts from the hands of us sinners, that being deemed worthy to serve at your holy altar without blame, we may obtain the reward of the faithful stewards on the fearful day of your just judgment. Through the mercies of your only begotten Son, with whom you are blessed, together with your holy good and life-creating spirit, now and forever into the ages of ages. Amen. Peace be unto all. And with your spirit. Let us love one another that with one mind we may confess. Christ is in the midst. He was, is, and ever shall be. Christ is in the midst. Christ is in the midst. I will love you, Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock, my refuge, and my deliverer. Guard the doors, guard the doors, wisdom, let us be attentive. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all ages, light of light, true God of true God, begotten not created, of one essence with the Father, through whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and became man. He was crucified for us under Pontius Pilate and suffered and was buried. And he rose on the third day according to the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom shall have no end. And in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the creator of life, who proceeds from the Father, who together with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who spoke through the prophets in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead in the life of the age to come. Amen. Storm and color, storm and motor for proscomen. Tina yen on a foran and in any prosperity. Η χάρη του κυρίου ημών, Ισού Χριστού, και αγάπη του Θεού και πατρό και κοινωνία του Αγίου Πνεύματο. Ή με το παντόν ημών. Και μετά του πνεύματο σου. Ανοσχώ με τα σκαρδία. Ευχαριστήσουμε τον Κύριο αξιών και δικαιών. Master, Lord God, worshipful Father Almighty, it is truly just and right to the majesty of your holiness to praise you, to hymn you, to bless you, to worship you, to give thanks to you, to glorify you, the only true God. And to you offer this our spiritual worship with a contrite and humble heart and humble spirit. <clears throat> For you have given us to know your truth, who is worthy to praise your mighty acts, or to make known all of your praises, or to tell all of your wonderful deeds at all times, Master of all things, Lord of heaven and earth, 
and of every creature visible and invisible. You are seated upon the throne of glory and behold the depths. You are without beginning, invisible and comprehensible, beyond words, unchangeable. You are the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the great God and Savior of our hope, the image of your goodness, the true seal of revealing in himself you, the Father. He is the living word, the true God, eternal wisdom, life, sanctification, power, and the true life. Through him, the Holy Spirit was manifested, the spirit of truth, the gift of sonship, the pledge of our future inheritance, the first fruits of eternal blessings, the life-giving power, the source of sanctification, through whom every rational and spiritual creature is made capable of worshiping you and giving you eternal glorification for all things are subject to you. For you are praised by the angels, archangels, thrones, dominions, principalities, authorities, powers, and the many-eyed cherubim. Round about you stand the seraphim, one with six wings and the other with six wings. With two they cover their faces, with two they cover their feet. With two they fly, crying out to one another with unceasing voices and ever resounding praises, singing the victory hymn, proclaiming, crying out, and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord Sabaoth, heaven and earth are filled with your glory, Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, and Hosanna in the highest, be God. Together with these blessed powers, loving master, we sinners also cry out and say, truly, you are holy and most holy, and there are no bounds to the majesty of your holiness. You are holy in all your works, for with righteousness and true judgment, you have won all things for us. For having made man by taking dust from the earth and having honored him with your own image, O oh God, you placed him in a garden of delight, promising him eternal life and his garden of everlasting blessings and the observance of your commandments. For when he disobeyed you, the true God, who created him, was led astray by the deception of the serpent, becoming subject to death. Through his own transgressions, you, O oh God, in your righteous judgment, expelled him from paradise into this world, returning him to the earth from which he was taken yet providing for him the salvation of regeneration in your Christ. For you did not forever reject your creature whom you made, O good one, nor did you forget the work of your hands, but because of your tender compassion. You visited him in various ways. You sent forth prophets. You performed mighty works by your saints, who in every generation have pleased you. You spoke to us by the mouth of your servants, the prophets, announcing to us the salvation which was to come. You gave us the law to help us. You appointed angels as guardians. And when the fullness of time had come, you spoke to us through your Son himself, through whom you created the ages. He being the splendor of your glory and the image of your being, upholding all things by the word of his power, thought it not robbery to be equal with you, God and Father, but being God before all ages, he appeared on earth and lived with humankind, becoming incarnate of the Holy Virgin, and he emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, conforming to the body of our lowliness, that he might change us in the likeness and image of his glory. For since through man sin came into the world, and through sin death, it pleased you, your only begotten Son, who is in your bosom, God and Father, born of a woman, the holy Theotokos, and ever Virgin Mary, born under the law to condemn sin in his flesh, so that those who died in Adam may be brought to life in him, your Christ. He lived in this world and gave us precepts of salvation, releasing us from the delusions of idolatry. He guided us to the sure knowledge of you, the true God and Father. He acquired us for himself as his chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Having cleansed us by water and sanctified us with the Holy Spirit, he gave himself as ransom to death, in which we were held captive, sold under sin. Descending into Hades through the cross, that he might fill all things with himself, he loosed the bonds of death. He rose on the third day, having opened a path for all flesh to the resurrection from the dead, since it was not possible that the author of life would be dominated by corruption. So he became the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep, the firstborn of the dead, that he might be himself the first in all things. Ascending into heaven, he sat at the right hand of your majesty on high, and he will come to render to each according to his works. As memorials of his saving passion, he has left us these gifts which we have set forth before you according to his commands. For when he was about to go forth to his voluntary, ever memorable, and life-giving death, on the night in which he was delivered up for the life of the world. He took bread in his holy and pure hands, and presenting it to you, God and Father, and offering thanks, blessing, and sanctifying, and breaking it. 
He gave it to his holy disciples and apostles, saying, Take it, this is my body, which is broken for you, for the remission of sins. Likewise, he took the cup of the fruit of the vine, and having mingled it, offering thanks, blessing, and sanctifying it. He gave it to his holy disciples and apostles, saying, Drink of this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. <coughs> Do this in remembrance of me, for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim my death, and you confess my resurrection. Therefore, Master, we also remembering his saving passion and life-giving cross, his three-day burial and resurrection from the dead, his ascension into heaven and the enthronement at your right hand, God and Father, and his glorious and awesome and second coming. God be gracious to me, a sinner, have mercy upon my sins. We offer to you these gifts from your own gifts in all and for all. Catapanda, que diapanda. Therefore, most holy master, we also, your sinful and unworthy servants, whom you have made worthy to serve at your holy altar, not because of our own righteousness. For we have not done anything good upon earth, but because of your mercy and compassion, which you have so richly poured upon us. We dare to approach your holy altar and bring forth the symbols of your holy body and blood of Christ. We pray to you and call upon you, O Holy of Holies, that by the favor of your goodness, your Holy Spirit may come upon us and upon these gifts here presented to bless, sanctify, and make this bread to be the precious body of our Lord, God and Savior Jesus Christ. Don men arton tuton, arto timion soma tu kiriu ke teu ke sotira simoni su Christu. Amen. And this cup to be the precious blood of our Lord and God and Savior Jesus Christ. O de potirion tu to 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 dimion ema tu kiriu ke thiu ke sotiri simon. Isu Christu. Amen. Shed for the life and salvation of the world. O ek ti ifen iper dis tu gosmus o is ke sotirias. Amen, amen, amen. And unite us all to one another who become partakers of the one bread and the one cup. In the communion of the Holy is one Holy Spirit. Grant that none of us may partake of the Holy Body and Blood of your Christ to judgment or condemnation, that but we may be found mercy and grace with all the saints who through the ages have pleased your forefathers, fathers, patriarchs, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, martyrs, confessors, teachers, and every righteous spirit made perfect in faith. Especially for most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious lady, the Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary, Exeratos, Dispanania, Sacrande, Pirabloimeni, Sindoxa, Dispinisimum, Theotokos, Gay Parteno, Maria. Creation rejoices. For Saint John the Prophet, for the Baptist, the one who is the fellow apostle. Grace for Saint George the Great, Rocky of Angels, and for the Saints, who we commemorate today, and all your saints, for your supplications of God visit us. Remember also all those who are fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection to eternal life. Your prayer, your departed servants, and your pride, from whom the pre-existing God receives. Remember those who have fallen in the conflict of Ukraine, 
Lord, bless their souls it's unto eternity. Time. Give them rest in oh, place of life, comfort, and peace. Give comfort to those who are afflicted for the sin. In the midst of this conflagration, give them hope into the future. Of grace, all we also pray for our departed priest, Nicholas the priest, Michael the priest, you, Matthew the priest, our brethren from Solomon's. And grant them rest, O God, where the light of your countenance shines. Again, we pray you be mindful of your holy Catholic and apostolic church, which is from one end of the inhabited earth to the other. Grant peace to her, which you obtain with the precious blood of your Christ. Strengthen also this house to the end of the ages. Remember, Lord, and those who have brought these gifts and for whom these gifts have been brought, and for who through them the intentions for which they were offered. Megaton of Matthias Remember, Lord, those who bear fruit and do good works in your holy churches and those who remember the poor. Reward them with your rich and heavenly gifts. Grant them in return for earthly things, heavenly gifts, for temporal, eternal, for corruptible, and corruptible. Remember, Lord, those who are in the deserts, on mountains, in caverns, and in the chambers of the earth. Remember, Lord, those living in chastity and godliness and asceticism and holiness of life. Remember, Lord, this country and all those in public service with whom you have allowed to govern on earth. Grant them profound and lasting peace. Speak to their hearts good things concerning your church and all your people, that through the faithful conduct of their duties we may live peaceful and serene lives in all piety and holiness. Sustain the good in their goodness. Make the wicked good through your goodness. Remember, Lord, the people here presented and those who are absent with good cause. Have mercy on them and us according to the multitude of your mercy. Fill their treasuries with every good thing. Preserve their marriages in peace and harmony. Nurture the infants, instruct the youth, strengthen the aged. Give courage to the faint-hearted, reunite those separated, bring back those in error, and unite them to your holy Catholic and apostolic church. Free those who are held captive by unclean spirits, sail with those who sail, travel with those who travel. Defend the widows, protect the orphans, liberate the captives, heal the sick. Remember, Lord, those who are in mines and exile and harsh labor, and those in every kind of affliction, necessity, or distress. Those who entreat your loving kindness, those who love us and those who hate us, those who have asked us to pray for them, unworthy though we may be. Remember, Lord our God, all your people, and pour out your rich mercy upon them, granting them your petitions for salvation. Remember, O God, all those whom we have not remembered through ignorance, forgetfulness, or because of their multitude, since you know the name of each and age of each from their mother's womb. For you, Lord, are the helper of the helpless, the hope of the hopeless, the savior of the afflicted, the haven of the voyager, and the physician of the sick. Be all things to all, you who know each person, his requests, his household, and his needs. Deliver this community and city, O Lord, and every city and land from famine, plague, earthquake, flood, fire, sword, invasion of foreign enemies, and civil war. Above all, remember, Lord, Archbishop and Father Methodios, grant that he may serve your holy churches in peace, keep him safe, honorable, and healthy for many years, rightly teaching the word of your truth. Remember also, Lord, those of each of us who calls to mind, and all your people. And all the people. Remember, Lord, all Orthodox bishops who rightly teach the word of your truth. Remember, Lord, my unworthiness according to the multitude of your mercies. Forgive my every transgression, both voluntary and involuntary. Do not take away the grace of your Holy Spirit from these gifts here presented because of my sins. Remember, Lord, the presbyters, the diaconate in Christ, and every order of the clergy. Do not confound any of us who stand about your holy altar. Visit us with your goodness, Lord. Manifest yourself to us through your rich compassion. Grant us seasonable weather and fruitful seasons and gentle showers upon the earth so that it may bear fruit. Bless the crown of the year of your goodness. Prevent schism in the church. Pacify the raging of the heathen. Quickly stop the uprisings of heresies by the power of your Holy Spirit. Receive us all into your kingdom. Declare us to be sons and daughters of the light and of the day. Grant us your peace and your love, Lord our God, for you have given us all things. And grant that with one voice and one heart we may glorify and praise your most honorable and majestic name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, now and forever and to the ages of ages. Amen. May the mercy of our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ be with you all and with your spirit. Having remembered all the saints, let us again in peace pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the precious gifts offered and consecrated, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, 
Lord have mercy. Let our loving God, who has received them in his holy, heavenly, and spiritual altars, and offering spiritual fragrance, may in return send on upon us divine grace and the gift of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Lord have mercy. Having prayed for the unity of the faithful communion of the Holy Spirit, let us commend ourselves to one another in our whole life to Christ our God. To you, O Lord. Please remain seated. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever to the ages of ages. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Father. A blessed Holy Saturday to all of you, and I wish all of you Kali Anastasi. Of all the beautiful services of Holy Week, it's hard to pick one that is a favorite. For me, this is a favorite, and it always has been. In Greek, they refer to this as the Proti Anastasi, the first resurrection. This service technically is celebrated in the evening. It is a vesperal liturgy. So, like we said, everything is in reverse order during Holy Week. So this is really the first proclamation of the resurrection. And shortly after this service in the evening, then we would go into the service that you will be attending tonight, which starts with the orthros of the resurrection and then the Christos Anesti and the divine liturgy of St. John Chrysostom. Today is the last in a series of times that we celebrate the liturgy of St. Basil the Great, and that's why of all the extended prayers once again. And this day is the seventh day. This is the Sabbath. Is it not? That's why it's called Sabato. Saturday, Sabato, Sabbath. And on the seventh day in creation, in Genesis, God rested. And now on this seventh day, God, our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, who died for us on the cross, was laid in a tomb, and he rested in the tomb on the seventh day. But don't be deceived, because Christ was not fully at rest on the Sabbath day. It was at that time that he went to Sheol, what the Hebrews used to refer to as the underworld, where the shadows of those who had passed resided. And who was there but John the Baptist to proclaim his coming to them? And he preached to them and brought them to the resurrection. We will celebrate that again tonight with the raising of Adam and Eve, our first mother and father from Sheol, and all the departed saints of the church. There are a number of ironies that we witness during Holy Week. And the one that really sticks in my mind and I, that I've had trouble digesting over the years is that when Pilate offered up to Christ to be freed for the Passover. They gave him a choice between Pilate and another person, a robber, who's more than a robber, he was a murderer and a zealot. And he went by the name of Barabbas. Now Barabbas was not his real name. Barabbas means son of the father. Bar Abbas. When Christ referred to the Father, he referred to him as Father, Abba, meaning Daddy. It's a very endearing form of saying Father. So in Hebrew, when you say, like the Apostle Simon Peter, Simon bar Jonah, Simon son of Jonah. So bar Abbas means son of the Father. How ironic that the son of the father is the one who was freed, the robber and the murderer, and not the true son of the father, Christ the Messiah. I think that illustrates the degree of the blindness of faith of those at that time. But we rejoice, we rejoice, even though we're saddened by the events that we witness through his mockery and his scourgings and his suffering on the cross, his death and his burial, we rejoice now because we know that he is busy preparing for his resurrection, for our resurrection, to give us life eternal. And once again, the 
Church offers the Holy Eucharist. You know, many people over the years have grown up with the tradition that, oh, you know, Holy Communion, you know, we receive Communion maybe three times a year, maybe four. That's pushing it. You know, we don't go all that often because, you know, I don't want to fast for three days and every week and then go to receive Communion and, you know, we make sure we try to go for Christmas. We definitely try to go one time during Easter between Palm Sunday and Holy Thursday and Holy Saturday morning or maybe Anastasy, maybe one of those or one of the pre-sanctified liturgies. And then again in summer for Panagias, right? The Dormition of the Virgin on August 15th following a small Lent. And maybe, maybe, just maybe, you celebrate your name day, your patron saint's day, and you'll receive communion. That's all well and good. But that, my beloved, is not the tradition of the church. That was a manifestation more during the Ottoman occupation of the Balkans and Greece and the Middle East, where the church had flourished, but was under scrutiny. People were watched. It was dangerous to go out and go to church and proclaim your belief. So they limited their attendance for receiving communion only to a few times a year. Whereas we offer how many liturgies and pre-sanctified liturgies? And in each one, the Eucharist is prepared. It's not prepared just for the priest to consume. A priest cannot celebrate any form of divine liturgy or pre-sanctified liturgy without at least one lay person present. I've said this before, Orthodox priests do not perform, perform private masses celebrated alone. We're not permitted to. It doesn't follow the canons of the church. One lay person has to be present for a Eucharistic service to take place. And at least one lay person has to receive the sacrament, whether they're prepared or not. I can remember in this parish years ago when I was a chanter and Father Michael was the Boris Domino, and Louis, you've done the same. How many times either Louis or I have served the liturgy with Father Michael, the two, of, you know, one and the other, being the only two people in the building? So I would chant, or Lou would chant, and Father would do the service, and we would receive communion. And that's how we were able to do the service. Without that, service could not take place. The Church provides Holy Communion to give you life. That's why Christ died on the cross. He was pierced in his side and blood and water came forth. And this is what we're giving you to nourish you, to give you eternal life, his body and his blood as he we just proclaimed. And it is done frequently. And how is it that you prepare for frequent communion? You know, nobody's going to eat lentil soup for three days every, you know, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I don't think so, but if you follow the rules of the church, if you abstain on Wednesdays and Fridays from meat, perhaps from dairy if you can, and then on a Sunday morning you, you have your last meal on Saturday evening, you go to bed, you get up, you don't eat anything until you come to church, receive communion, and then you can eat. And then there'll be those who say, my father, what about the great fasts? What about Great Lent in 40 days of no meat and no dairy in the other Lenten periods before Panagias and before Christmas and before the Feast of the Apostles? Yes, those are fasting periods. They are fasting periods. But communion is offered during those fasting periods, is it not? We still have Sunday liturgies during Lent. We have pre-sanctified liturgies to provide you strength through your fasting. And that's where your more profound fasting is done. Even now, Holy Week, Holy Friday and Saturday in particular, very strict fast days, okay? And today, those of you who will receive communion, you'll be prepared for the Anastasy tonight. Now I know there are some in parishes where I grew up. It's like, oh, Holy Saturday, we made it. 
we have communion, let's go to the pancake house now. <laughs> Hurry up. Everyone's hungry. It's like, you'll last a few more hours. <laughs> have something, eat something, be modest. Prepare to receive the Eucharist again tomorrow morning after midnight for the anastasy. There's nothing like it. When right life is renewed, that's what we see all around us in this beautiful springtime of year. Life renewed. And life renewed forever through our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ. God bless all of you. Kalia Anastasi. Our God, the God who saves, you teach us justly to thank you for the good things which you have done and still do for us. You are our God who has accepted these gifts. Cleanse us from every defilement of flesh and spirit and teach us how to live in holiness by your fear so that receiving the portion of your holy gifts with a clear conscience, we may be united with the holy body and blood of your Christ. Having received them worthily, we may have Christ dwelling in our hearts and may we become the temple of your Holy Spirit. Yes, our God, let none of us be guilty before these, your awesome and heavenly mysteries, nor be infirm in body and soul by partaking of them unworthily, but enable us even up to our last breath to receive a portion of your holy gifts worthily as provision for eternal life and as acceptable defense at the awesome judgment seat of your Christ, so that we also together with all the saints who through the ages have pleased you may become partakers of your eternal good things and which you, Lord, have prepared for those who love you. And make us worthy, Master, with confidence and without fear of condemnation, to dare call you the Heavenly God, Father, and to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Pater Imon, o indisuranis, ai astito tonomasu, el teto i vasiliasu, yenitito to felimasu, os en murano ki epitisis. Tonarton imon de repiusion dosim in simeron, ki afesim in taplimata imon, os ke imis afimen zivlate simon, ke imis en eges mas aspiras mon, alarise imas, akotuponiru. Ότι σου έστεινε η βασιλεία και η δίνη και η δόξα του Πατρός και του Ιού και του Ιού Πνεύματος νυν και αΐ και εις τους αιώνας των αιώνων. Αμήν. Ήν η πάση. Τας και φαλάς ημών ο Κύριο κλείναμε. Lord, Master, the Father of mercies and God of every consolation, bless, sanctify, guard, fortify, and strengthen those who have bowed their heads to you. Distance them from every evil deed, lead them to every good work, and make them worthy to partake without condemnation of these, your most pure and life-giving mysteries, for the forgiveness of sins and for the communion of the Holy Spirit. By the grace, mercy, and love for us of your only begotten Son, with whom you are blessed, together with your Holy Good and Light Creating Spirit, Non forever into the ages of ages. Lord Jesus Christ, our God, hear us from your holy dwelling place and from the glorious throne of your kingdom. You're enthroned on high with the Father and also invisibly present here among us. Come and sanctify us and let your pure body and precious blood be given to us by your mighty hand and through us to all your people.
I believe and confess, Lord, that you are truly the Christ, the Son of the living God, who came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the first. I also believe that this is truly your body and this truly your precious blood. Therefore, I pray to you, have mercy upon me and forgive me my transgressions, voluntary and involuntary, in word and deed, in knowledge or in ignorance, and make me worthy without condemnation to partake of your pure mysteries for the remission of sins and for eternal life. Amen. Behold, I approach for divine communion. O Maker, burn me not as I partake, for you are fire consuming the unworthy, but cleanse me from every stain. Tremble, O man, as you behold the divine blood. It is a burning coal that sears the unworthy. The body of God both deifies and nourishes me. It deifies the spirit and wondrously nourishes the mind. You have smitten me with yearning, O Christ, and by your divine heroes you have changed me. But burn up with spiritual fire my sins and grant me to be filled with delight in you, so that leaping for joy I may magnify, O good one, your two comings. How shall I, who am unworthy, enter into the splendor of your saints? If I should dare to enter into the bridal chamber, my vesture will be contemned me, since it is not a wedding garment. And being bound up, I shall be cast out by the angels. Cleanse, O Lord, the filth of my soul, and save me, as you are the one who loves mankind. In your love, Lord, cleanse my soul and save me. Master, who loves mankind, Lord Jesus Christ, my God, let not these holy gifts be to my judgment, because I am unworthy, but rather for the purification and sanctification of both soul and body, and the pledge of the life in the kingdom to come. It is good for me to cleave unto God, and to place in him the hope of my salvation. O Son of God, receive me today as a partaker of your mystical supper, for I will not speak of the mystery to your enemies, nor will I give you a kiss, as did Judas. But like the thief, I confess to you, remember me, Lord, in your kingdom. Behold, I approach Christ, our mortal King and God, the precious and most holy body of our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, has given to me, Alexander. The unworthy priest for the forgiveness of sins. The Lord was awakened as one out of sleep and arose delivering us delivering us
Metafobute pisus kegapis prosethete, with the fear of God, faith and love, draw near. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord was away. And a rose delivering us. The light is good to the city, and so I came at this reception. I can't keep the idea of me. Deliver 
Save your people and bless your inheritance. Remember also us, O merciful one, as you remember the thief in the kingdom of heaven. Wash away, Lord, the sins and offenses of those here come in your precious blood. Through the prayers and intercessions of the Felt Orcus and the Virgin Mary and of all your saints.
exalted God above him, the Lord glory be over the earth. The exalted God above him, the Lord glory be over all the earth. The exalted God above the heavens, the Lord glory be over all the earth. The Lord be blessed with those who want to find the name, take the Son of the name. Blessed is our God, always now and forever, into the ages of ages. Having partaken of the divine, holy, pure, mortal, heavenly, life-giving mysteries of Christ, let us worthily give thanks to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy upon us, and keep us, O God, in your grace. Lord have mercy. Having prayed for a perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless day, let us commit ourselves to one another and a whole life to Christ our God. To you, O Lord. We thank you, Lord our God, for the communion of your holy most pure, immortal, and heavenly mysteries which you have granted us for the benefit, sanctification, and healing of our souls and bodies. Grant, Master, all that communion of the holy body and blood of your Christ may become for us faith unashamed, love unfeigned, fullness of wisdom, healing of soul and body, repelling every hostile adversary observance of your commandments and acceptable defense of the dread judgment seat of your Christ. For you are sanctification, do we give glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, now and forever and to the ages of ages. Amen. Let us depart in peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Father, give the blessing. Today we have seen our Lord Jesus Christ set forth upon the altar. Today we have laid hold of the coal of fire who shadowed the cherubim praise and song. Today we have heard the great and sweetest voice which says, This body consumes the thorns of sins and illumines the souls of men. This body which by her touching healed the condition of the hemorrhaging woman. This body by beholding which the daughter of the Canaanite was healed. This body which when the harlot approached with all her soul loosened the mire of sins. This body which Thomas touched crying aloud saying, My Lord and my God. This body is a very great and exceedingly sublime salvation for us. For again, he himself, the Logos, in our life said, This blood for you is shed and given unto the remission of sins. We have drunk the blood, holy and immortal, O beloved ones. We have drunk, O beloved ones, the blood pouring forth from the side of the Lord, which cures every sickness and frees every soul. We have drunk the blood by which we were purchased, by which we were delivered, and became known and were enlightened. Behold, brethren, what sort of body we have eaten. Behold, children, what sort of blood we have drunk. Behold, what sort of agreement we have given to God, so we be not put to shame on the fearful day of retribution. And who will ably glorify the mystery of thy grace? We were made worthy to partake of the gift. Let us keep it until the end, so that we may be vouchsafed to hear the blessed and sweetest and holy voice of him that said, Come, ye blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you. Then shall be terrified the crucifiers of the Lord. Then shall be ashamed them that believe not in the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, them that have utterly denied and have not confessed the Holy Trinity in one Godhead. But as for us, O beloved ones, let us celebrate well the baptism of Christ and the holy and life-giving resurrection, by which the salvation of the world has been accomplished, which we may all achieve by the grace and philanthropy of our Lord Jesus Christ, to whom is due our glory, honor, and worship, to the Father, and to the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The mystery of the sensation of Christ has been accomplished and perfected. Forever and forever. As far as it is in our power, we have had Blessed a memorial of the death, and we have seen the Lord. people suffer so your resurrection, and so much of your many lights. We have enjoyed your exhaustion of life, which you will to come. Be quite well pleased to give us all to the grace of your holy and mighty spirit, and the end of the ages. Forever, from this time forth, and ever and forever. May the blessing of the Lord and His mercy come upon you through His divine grace and love for mankind always, now and forever, into the ages of ages. Amen. Glory to you, our Christ, our God, our hope, Lord, glory to you. May Christ, our true God, who rose from the dead through the intercessions of His all-pure and holy Mother, the Theotokos, and ever-Virgin Mary, 
the power of the precious and life-giving cross, the protection of the honorable bodiless powers of heaven, the supplication of the honor of the glorious prophet and foreigner John the Baptist, of the holy, glorious, and laudable apostles, the holy, glorious, and victorious martyrs, our saintly and God-bearing fathers, of St. Gregory the Theologian, Patriarch of Constantinople, and our patron saint of the Holy Righteous and of God, Joachim and Anna, and of St. George, the, the trophy bearer, whose memory commemorates today and of all the saints who have mercy us and save us as a good and loving and merciful God. Through the prayers of our Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy upon us and save us. The Holy Trinity, guard, guide, and protect you. Kali Anastasi. Holy Anastasi. Before Father gives out the Andidaro, um, I wanted to thank him for leading us in service today. Um, because of his presence, I was able to go for a hospital visit early today that was better not left till later and to bring someone the body and blood of our Lord. And I was so encouraged when I was driving to the hospital and back to think that you were here worshiping with Father and I was bringing the church to somebody who couldn't come to church. Um, and I love that idea of the prayers that we say in our church and the hymns, especially on a day like today, uh, being made manifest and being made concrete. Um, I encourage you to take one of these beautiful symbols of victory home with you to put it into your Holy Week book or your Bible, um, again, to remind us that the faith isn't just about what we say and what we chant or what we think, but about what we do about those things. To go to minister to people, to minister to one another, to be present for one another, to help people, to feed people, to do all of the things that uh, make St. Gregory very special and make the church the church. So thank you again. If you can be here tonight, uh, we'll get rolling tonight about 11.15, 11.20, what have you, and we'll bring this, this anastasy, this, this resurrection, this beautiful um, spiritual journey of ours to its full conclusion. Thank you very much, and we'll see you later on tonight, hopefully. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Glory to thee, our God, glory to thee. Heavenly King, O Comforter, the Spirit of Truth, who art everywhere present and fillest all things. O treasury of every good and bestower of life, come and dwell in us and cleanse us from every stain and save our souls, O good one.